Hello there, everybody. My name is Ashley Hunt. I'm the Senior Project Management Instructor at Storm & Studios and PM Guru. And I'm here to talk to you today about the five different ways that Agile can benefit your virtual team. You know, world's weird. A lot of us are still working from home. Some of us aren't. We're going back and forth to the office, maybe in hybrid environment. So we've adapted. We've learned how to work within Agile teams that maybe are a bit more virtual. And if you haven't tried any Agile, it's definitely a really great way to provide value to your organization faster. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So what's in it for you? Very first thing, Agile. The ability to manage changing priorities. Things change, we want to produce something better, faster, be first to market, and things like that. And even if you're not in a software environment, maybe you're in IT, those are the types of things that can really benefit your organization. Project transparency, we're going to take a look at that and some of the tools that you can use to do so. IT and business alignment, I mean, that is literally where the world is going. Every organization has an IT department. Every IT department needs to align with what's going on in the organization. And with technology changing so quickly, we have to be able to rapidly adapt to those changes. Faster time to market, who doesn't want that? And finally, improving team morale. So those are the topics that we're just gonna cover in this YouTube video. Very first thing, ability to manage changing priorities. We know change is inevitable. So being able to pivot with smaller releases more often, the team can adapt and adjust to changes in scope, changes in the organization, and changing priorities. The world is different. So is project management. We've had to adapt and adjust. So being able to practice agility is going to give us the opportunity to take changes and adapt to them. So being able to pivot with smaller releases, I'm gonna talk about that just a little bit. Project transparency, this is huge. I mean, we have so many different software programs right now that can help all teams be more transparent. But what's cool about the agile technology, things like scrum boards or Kanban boards or online interactive integrated systems is that we can see the workflow and we can work within the work in progress and move that toward done faster and more agile, if you will, and also practice some continuous improvement. So a little bit of the way that project teams remain transparent is they do things like daily stand-up meetings or daily scrum if you practice scrum as a framework. The development team will get together and discuss what did we do yesterday? that helped the team meet its goal? What are we going to work on today that helps the team meet its goal? And what are some of the impediments that are stopping us from meeting our goal? This is daily. You can do this on a Zoom call. You can sit. It doesn't have to be a stand-up meeting, but it's every single day for 15 minutes. It's not a solution-oriented meeting. So all it's really doing is providing information to the team from each other and identifying some of those speed bumps or areas that are keeping them from being able to move forward. So if you're in a more predictive environment, maybe you can't do daily stand-up meetings, try it once or twice a week and see how it goes. It's practicing continuous improvement and it's identifying risk and impediments every single day. Now, if you have never used a task board, a Kanban board, a scrum board, they all have a similar premise. The goal is to watch workflow from left to right. There are a ton of really great online Kanban boards. You probably have Planner in your 365 Microsoft if you're using the cloud-based Microsoft, but there are a bunch of other software programs out there that do it. Even the new Microsoft project will have a task board as well as a Gantt chart. I'm not lying, the, this type of scheduling completely changed my life. The backlog, I just want you to imagine that as to do. What the team is selecting to work on in a two or four week iteration or even a long term project. This is the work that they're going to pull into progress, develop and push it out for acceptance and then market is done. But everybody can see the workflow. I've seen a lot of like help desks use Kanban as an interactive way to see what tickets are coming in, what is priority, who's working on what and just watch the work through the workflow. 
completely changed the way that I schedule. So if you're looking for a free one, you can go out to Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O.com. Check it out. Look for Planner if you're using 365 or some of the others out there that can help you manage your workflow. IT and business alignment. Well, every organization wants a better ability to keep up with the market, right? But there are changes in how value is viewed. And by value, that could be money. It could be monetary value to the organization. It could be the customer getting what they want. Providing results faster and identifying defects sooner is really the wave of the future organizationally, especially on the technology side of things, IT, and how IT departments align with what the organization needs. Bigger, better, faster, sooner, right? But that's hard today because we have supply chain issues and all sorts of things that are going on in the world. So planning in short iterations, two weeks, or four weeks, that's going to allow you to really just say, hey, look, this is what we're doing in the next two weeks. We're gonna release something at the end of this two weeks, and if it gets approved, it can get pushed out. For example, I often use the like software, very simple, type, spell, check, print. Now, I know there's a lot that goes into it. If you're a software developer, you're like, it's just not that easy. I know that, but just as an example, let's say after two weeks, we push out the type feature. That's priority. Well, the customer, the end user, they can demo that. They can type and see, is it working? Is it not working? Then the next two week or four week iteration, we'll push out spell check and then print. And somewhere along the line, the customer is going to say, hmm, I would like something else. Can you do X, Y, Z? That work would get prioritized and that new feature and function would get pushed out. So it's a different way of, of planning. It's a different way of executing. Whereas on like a predictive or a waterfall type of project, there's this heavy front loaded plan that we execute. And if things go sideways, we go through formal change control. Practicing agility allows you to plan in very short spurts or iterations and then produce something that's valuable or usable to the organization or the customer. Some of the things faster to market that a team is going to track, and you don't really need to go far in depth into this. If you're already practicing these things, then you're aware. But agile teams are tracking continuous improvement and getting value faster to the market. And they do that with different types of metrics. The first metric is called thoroughput. That's literally how many hours, let's say, of work the team can accomplish in a set time frame. Ideal time would be 80 hours worth of work in 80 hours, but that's not even remotely possible. So how many hours worth of work is the team getting accomplished? 60 in 80 hours? So they're going to be tracking that, their productivity. Cycle time is measurement of work that has progressed all the way from plan or completed deliverables. This is what the team is trying to improve, getting more work done faster in the same set timeframes. So they're gonna be tracking continuous improvement. They're gonna be tracking the measurement of total output of work or user stories, if you're familiar with Agile, and push that out to predict future outputs. If I can get, and we'll just, and if you're not familiar with user stories, we'll just use you know tasks. If you have 10 tasks that you can get done in two weeks and you practice continuous improvement, maybe the next time you can get 12 done, 15 done, 20 done. And eventually the team is going to get to that point where they've reached their max velocity or their max capacity. This allows the team to forecast forward and answer the question of, hey, if this is your max velocity or capacity, how long is that going to take us to accomplish everything else? But morale, maybe morale is a little low right now. It just depends on your organization and how supportive they are of you. If you're working in a virtual environment or even co-located, morale is so important to organizational performance objectives. So one of the things that gets done is what's called servant leadership. There's no management, really. You are a servant leader. You lead your team from behind by being supportive. And the teams in Agile are self-directed and self-managed. They decide what work they're going to do. They decide how they're going to do the work rather than having it be dictated to them. Because sometimes that causes a little bit of resentment. So the team having the onus on themselves to decide what they can do, how they can do it, and so on, is really empowering to your team. Retrospectives and continuous improvement, collaborative and communicative environments. Let's talk about retrospectives and the, the power of a retrospective. 
if you do lessons learned meetings, you know that they're typically done at the end of a project. Well, that doesn't help to change anything in the midst of the project. It's like, Ugh, that happened. Let's not do that again. But agile teams have retrospectives at the end of each iteration. So if your iterations are two weeks, at the end of every two weeks, the team is going to get together and discuss what went well. What do we do really well? What are we going to keep doing? What are we going to stop doing? What did not go so well? What empirical knowledge have we learned from the last two weeks where we're like, we're not doing that again? And what's, what are we going to stop doing? What are we going to start doing? And how can we practice continuous improvement? This is such a, a powerful meeting, usually about an hour for the team to get together. It's so powerful and it pushes continuous improvement. And the team knows what they're going to keep doing, what's working and what's not working. They can also put together a recommended project charter and a team charter. A project charter is always at the very beginning of a project. Some agile teams don't do it. Most predictive projects do, but it discusses at a very high level what the project is, what the business case is stating as far as budgets, what identified risks, who the project manager is. That's not what this is. On the agile side of things, a team charter allows the team to work together, to collaborate and determine what are our values as a team? What are the ground rules? How are we going to communicate in this virtual or even co-located environment? How are we going to make decisions? Maybe the team decides that, hey, if, if we can't reach an agreement, there's maybe some functional conflict about estimates. We're just going to agree to go with the largest estimate. That's going to stop the circular conversations and any functional conflict, which means we disagree on the direction to go. What do we do about meetings? You know, are we going to have Zoom calls? Are we on teams and start on time and finish on time? And then any team agreements. This is basically the team saying, here is how we roll. And it is a powerful thing and it doesn't have to be like super intense or 80 pages long, but it is a really good way for the team to practice that self-direction and that self-management. Agile is an amazing way to manage your workflow better, faster, and provide more value. So if you're interested in Agile, the Agile Certified Practitioner, or even the new PMP exam right now, the Project Management Professional is 50% Agile and 50% Predictive. Tons of great information in those classes. So if you're interested in ways to put these into practice, as well as a, a variety of other amazing Agile best practices and Predictive, feel free to check out our classes at Storman Studios and PM Guru. I look forward to seeing you in a class sometime very soon. Thanks so much, everybody.